Thanks for joining me. This is my view on the view, of course, and I'm your host in the OTV. And I absolutely love hanging out with you, my view friends. So let's go ahead and jump to the first uh, hot take headline. The Daily Mail never fails. OK, so check out these hot take headlines um, from them. I mean, they've been on fire all week. As you know, of course, this is premiere week for season 27. So this one right here was very interesting because like you, I was watching the show when this happened. So this is what they say here, as you can see. The Views Anna Navarro accuses co-host Sonny Hostin of slut shaming during furious on screen row as moderator Joy Behar is forced to cut to commercials to end pandemonium. You know, I, I will tell you, as I said, I was watching the show when this happened, and I was really glad to see this for a number of reasons. Actually, for all the reasons I've talked about, actually, for about four and a half years um, that Anna has been coming to our show consistently. This is what I've said, and I'll repeat it because I know we have so many new people. Remember, Sonny Hostin was a child prodigy. We learned this, of course, from her, but mainly in her book, uh, her memoir, I Am These Truths, which is a fantastic book, by the way. I read it. I highly recommend If you are also a Sonny Hostin fan that you read it, check the comment section. I'll leave links there to it. But in there, she talked about it. And I can't remember the exact age, but she entered high school like at 12 or something like that. Or maybe it was college at high school at 12, college at 16, something like that. So she is a very smart woman. We also know that Sunny is very well read. And she also um, she also has a very gregarious personality. Um, she's just a fun girl. So she has what you would, I, I would really, and she's beautiful. So I would say she has everything that every woman uh, would really want. Now, there is no perfect person. So when you have someone like that sitting at a table like this, I've said she is, in my view on The View, the sharpest knife at, in the drawer at this table, not taking away anything from Whoopi Joy or Sarah. Alyssa wasn't there when I first started saying this, but she still is, even though we have the addition of Alyssa in my view on The View. So what I've said is when you have someone like that, they need an iron. You know, I reference that old Bible scripture, iron sharpens iron. OK, and of course, that was, um, you know, talking about something else. But my point is, is that when you're like that, you have to have someone who is able to challenge you successfully. But they can't it can't be in a messy. Let me get you told kind of way, because those people don't typically engage well in those types of conversations. I've said the only person to me. That not only has the courage but the same uh, chops as Sunny to be able to challenge her successfully at this table is Anna Navarro because Anna, you cannot back Anna down, okay? There ain't nothing Sunny could say or do that could cause Anna to be quiet or fall into silence or back her down the way we've seen her be able to do these other women. Also, remember when um, Sunny and Whoopi had their little tit for tat last season, we talked about it, where we talked about for years, you know, what's going on here? You know, Whoopi seems to at times be really, really hard on Sunny, whereas she lets other people at the table get away with a lot of these things that Sunny does. But it seems like Sunny gets under in her craw a little bit easier. But remember that day about the AI when when she saw she being Whoopi when she saw Sonny getting upset she backed down quickly. You see, if that were Anna, Anna wouldn't have backed down. So when Anna called her on the carpet during the conversation yesterday, saying, why is it that you always, you know, every time we have these conversations, you always, you know, she didn't say slut shame. She just said, you always get down on the woman, but you never say anything about the man. You immediately see, saw, see, uh, you immediately saw, excuse me, Sonny <laughs> get quiet for a few, few seconds there as she processed what Anna said, because Anna Anna was not in, 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 you know, this this person who wrote this said that she was furious. Anna was not furious. She was just irritated. And then we heard uh, Sarah jump in there and say, yeah, you know, I took my vows to Max, you know, not some random woman out there, you know. So if if your husband steps out on you, should you be mad at him or the woman or the man, you know, whatever the case may be? I have always maintained in my personal life and also anytime I've commentated that you should be upset with the man. Listen, the truth of the matter is in a relationship, whether it's marriage or dating or whatever, there will always be outside forces that seek to infiltrate the relationship. But it's up to the two people in that relationship to safeguard against those forces. That's why conversations are very, very important from start to finish. If you're in a relationship right now and you can't talk to him or her about anything, 
You can't tell them what you need from them. They can't tell you what they need. You want to know a good test? If they can talk to you about your weight or about something that you're really sensitive about, if they can talk to you about that and you don't get pissed and you don't tell them to shut up and you don't say, well, yeah, well, look at you, you know, then you got something good going on. Because I'm telling you, I think a one way to measure your relationship is the most sensitive topics. Can your partner talk to you about it successfully? Okay. If they can't, you got work to do. If it were me, I had work to do. So it, again, it's the two people's job to safeguard against these safeguard, uh, uh, these uh, outside forces. But according to Sonny, it's just, you know, the woman is, a, you know, the woman should be shamed. She's this, she's that. And I think that has a lot, her take has a lot to do with her religious beliefs. Of course, we know that Sonny is a Catholic, but you know, as a Christian, I will say that I I have been cheated on before in past relationships and I've also cheated. Okay. So see, you got to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Okay. So I've also cheated and I can tell you it had nothing to do with him. Just like when I was cheated on, it had nothing to do with me. Um, You know, if you're not committed to a relationship, you're going to lie, you know, and you just may cheat. Notice I said it like that. You are going to lie about something, whether it's how much money you spent at the store on the shoes or guys on the whatever, but you, but you could take it too far and you could cheat. Okay. When you're not really committed, this is something I want to say that I think needs to be said more often. Um, and I know that this is not for everyone, but you know, I'm going to tell it like it is anyway. So here's what I want to say. I think in this generation, so many people have been convinced by the emotionally, emotionally sick and the emotionally traumatized in our society that in a real commitment, there will be cheating and there will be lying. And that simply is not true. A real commitment is just that, folks. There is no cheating and there is no lying in a real committed relationship. Now, before you start typing, wait and hear everything, then you can disagree if you want to. See, what I'm saying actually just is the truth. I know it may not sound good. It may not feel good. We could think of all the exceptions, but there really isn't any. I remember years ago here on this very YouTube channel when this channel was about everything, not just about the view. I, I can't remember, something had happened between Will and Jada Smith. And I said, um, you know, that Will and Jada Smith were sick people. What I meant was they were emotionally sick. They're not healthy people. When it comes to certain things, they're not the people to listen to because they're not emotionally healthy. OK, let's just say if it's finances, we can listen to them on finances. Uh, if it's how to be a great actor when it comes to well, oh, we can listen to that. You know, you have to piece out what you can listen to from certain people when you know things about them. Do You get what I'm saying? When you don't know things about people, then, of course, you're not held responsible. I'm not held responsible for what we listen to and all that. But I'm talking about people who are, in this case, public people who we know a whole lot about. OK, remember, it wasn't until August Alcina came out and exposed certain things that they even acknowledged that they had an open relationship. They lied about it for decades upon decades. OK, but whenever whatever was going on back then, this was like five or six years ago. OK, y'all, I said I said these people are sick emotionally. I said they, they're not to be listened to. I said because they are going around touting enlightenment. When enlightenment, in their case, is nothing more than selfishness dressed up in a new fashion. So they would go around saying, we're so enlightened. You know, we've had all this therapy. We've done this. We've done that. Our love is to the point where we can just do whatever we want. He can be with whomever, you know, she can be with whomever, and we're still committed. You see, they were lying. See, not lying. That's not the way to say it. What I'm saying is they were telling people. A real commitment looks like this. It looks like I can go sleep around. She can go sleep around and we're still committed. And unfortunately, because sick draws sick, traumatized connects to traumatized a lot of people. And then you have selfishness that connects to selfishness. So many people wanted to believe that because it justified what they were doing. So they were just like, that's right. That's right. So I said, no, 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 no. These are not people to listen to because they're not they're not healthy. They're sick emotionally in this particular area. And I said, they're both their kids are screwed up. You know, I learned this from 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 working with children and families for 18 years. When you see one child, let's just say a couple has four kids. I'm just making up a number, four kids. And one of them come out a little screwy. You're like, OK, hey, things happen. <laughs> and they do. Things happen. Can't always pinpoint why something is. But when all of them <laughs> screwed up, 
Uh uh-uh, that's a result of mama and daddy. See, I learned that the hard way, working with so many families, going to court so many times when all of them are more than one. Let's just say it that way. More than one. Don't have to be all more than one. Uh uh-uh. I don't need to talk to the kids. I need to talk to mom and daddy because they grew up with you. They came out of you and they also grew up in your home. OK, so if they've got all these problems, they didn't just come. They, they it didn't just happen. See, nothing just happens. OK, nothing just happens. There's always a cause. OK, and my job was to figure out what it was. So going back to Will and Jada, I kept saying, no, people don't fall for this. This is just selfishness dressed up in a new suit and a new dress. These people aren't healthy. Well, some time later, years later, August Alcina came out and exposed you know, his situation. And then we learned from the mouth of Jada Pinkett Smith herself that she knew that boy was mentally ill and emotionally sick and she had sex with him anyway. Okay, you want to tell me that somebody I'm going to listen to, someone who prayed on a child because he was a child at the time. You're going to tell me? You see, it takes time sometimes for things to come all the way out. But the the, the red flags or the um, signs that people aren't healthy are always there. And see, we live in a world where people want to hold up their sign that says only God can judge me, which is only yet another way of folks trying to shut people up from talking about their mess and junk. The bottom line is, We're going to suffer when we go against the laws of life. I say that all the time because I've learned it for myself. I've also learned it by watching the lives of other people. We're just never going to get away with these things. So we think it's okay to just be in threesomes, like they said, foursomes, thousandsomes, whatever. You know, recently, was it two months ago, Jaden Smith came out and said the first time he did drugs was with his mom. He said his mom, Jada, was the one who introduced him and his family to psychedelic drugs. You want to tell me that's somebody we should be listening to? See, it took time for all this to come out. And yet I know I had people over here dragging me. Oh, you, you know, you da 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 you just not da 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 You can da 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 until the cows come home. I know what I'm talking about. I worked with too many people to tell to know that when you see certain things, it is what it is, no matter how much you like people. Doesn't mean they're they're healthy emotionally. And listen, we all have work to do. So I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about growth, consistent, steady growth, which is not the same as perfection. There will never be a perfect human being. But if we think we can get away with certain activities and behavior and sexual acts and not receive in ourselves the consequences of those acts, we're fooling ourselves. And I'm sorry, no matter what the society says, no matter what happens, There are consequences in the physical body, in the spirit, in the soul for certain behaviors. And so I said, y'all, listen, these people, uh uh-uh, no. (laughs) And then when I heard the the young man say a few months ago that his mom introduced him to drugs, I'm like, nobody should be shocked about that. I mean, I understand people are going to be shocked because you're like, what the heck? But that's no different than I know people, you know, not personally, but because of my work that I used to do, who the first drink their child ever had was because they let them have it. They gave it to them. They used to buy alcohol for them. And the the parents' excuse was, well, they're going to do it anyway, so they might as well. I'm like, okay, see, that's sick. That's someone who's not emotionally healthy. No, they're not going to do it anyway. (laughs) No, no. there are a lot of kids who've never taken a drink, never smoked a cigarette, never done anything. So, yeah, (laughs) I know a lot of those kids. So, no, you you shouldn't have said they're going to do it anyway. And when you further talk to them, you learn that was what happened with them, with their parents. You know, so a lot of times, guys, we have to understand um, that it's not right to slut shame. Um, Sometimes I think depending on the situation, slut shaming is appropriate. Let's be honest. okay? it is appropriate. Um, But then in the cases that Anna was calling Sunny on the carpet about, it really is an inequity there. Why is it that she never really mentions the man? I suspect that Sunny's probably dealt with um, um, infidelity in her marriage. And she may actually feel like that, you know, the woman was at fault or whomever was at fault. And it's like, no, I mean, if if my husband or my boyfriend or whatever takes down his pants for another woman, I can't blame her for that. Okay, because taking down your pants, there's a whole process you got to go through, (laughs) not just mentally, but physically. At any point, you could have stopped when you unbuckled the belt. You could have stopped then. (laughs) You you know, we just go through it. Right. The whole process. But when you know, when you go through it all, I, I say, you know, that is not a committed relationship because real commitment means trust. It means no lying. It means no cheating. It means we safeguard against the outside forces 
of our relation that try to destroy what we are building. And so I love that Anna, um, you know, touched on that and really called on the carpet because no one, none of the other ladies have, you know, Whoopi gets irritated when Sunny says that kind of stuff, but she never really could call her on the carpet effectively. Um, but Anna had the chops to do it. And it was a good thing to see. Sunny needs that, not needed to make her feel bad, but she needs someone who can challenge her successfully. And I'm telling you, think about the table we have. I love them all. Well, that's not true. I don't love Alyssa. I don't think she's great for this show, but I, I love the rest of the women. <clears throat> but I know as much as they are smart too and all these things, they just don't have what it takes to properly combat a uh, uh, debate with Sonny Hostin. She needs an Anna. That's why I've said Anna really needs to be there every day. I know she can't because she doesn't want to and all the stuff we've already heard her say, but that doesn't stop me from wishing. <laughs> now, the last hot take headline I'll share for this morning is this one right here. Um, this was very interesting. As I said, the Daily Mail never fails. Um, this headline was Whoopi Goldberg reveals she's quarantining with the mystery man amid her COVID battle as she shares health update uh, with fans after missing season premiere of The View. Well, if you saw the show yesterday, you know, when they showed the video of Whoopi, she was in a room of sorts and she had on a mask. And what she said was, I'm here by myself, she said, but there's a man. <laughs> you can go back on YouTube, on The View's YouTube page, and you can see it. But she said, there, there's a man here, and he has on four masks. And of course, you can always read the headline here. This is Kirstie uh, McCormick's uh, headline, by the way. Uh, shout out to Kirstie, Kirstie over there at the Daily Mail. Um, but yeah, but we don't know who that man was. Was he a housekeeper? Was he a nurse? You know, um, a lot of people... Um, are able to afford to have nurses, uh, you know, when they have these illnesses like COVID or whatnot, they can have a nurse come in for a few days and help them or a CNA. Uh, I'm not sure what the fancy people would call it, but we would just call it a CNA, someone who can help you bathe yourself, get dressed and fix your food and all those things in case you need that kind of help. And of course, Whoopi is definitely able to afford that. So we don't know who the man was. He could have been our man. He could have literally been a boyfriend. You know, we don't know who Whoopi has over there in Italy, you know, while she's over there. Um, it may not just be the scenery and the architecture drawing her to Italy. She may have a, a good dose of a man over there. But these are some of the hot takes uh, on our show this week. There are many more that are out there. I love reading these headlines. There are some of them are very entertaining. Well, all of them are always entertaining, but some of them are very, very interesting. So thanks for joining me today. Drop down there in the comment section. Let us know your thoughts on hot takes, these hot take topics. So thanks so much for joining me. I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.